Hey, Andy here. I was at a workshop uh, just yesterday in Texas, and they were asking questions about integrating Harvester with Rancher, and I thought that was a really good uh, video opportunity. And I kind of wanted to show you uh, the manual way to kind of do it, and I'll probably come back with another video at another point with uh, more of an automated way to do it. But I've got Rancher running in DigitalOcean right now, and I've got, we can look at the local cluster, I've got three nodes, yay, DigitalOcean, all the things. You can tell by the external IP addresses, I'm using just three random nodes in DigitalOcean. And then I have a Harvester cluster running locally. We can go to hosts, and you can see that it's a 192.168. So that's locally here in my house. Uh, the first step you need to do to kind of connect these things is go into virtualization management and create a new cluster. And I can go ahead and hit import existing, and let's call this test. And it's really as simple as creating it, and you'll get a registration URL, a cluster registration URL, okay? To, uh, don't pay attention too much to that hash uh, of the YAML, but notice Rancher RFET.io. So what I've done in Harvester, I've gone under the advanced settings, and there's a cluster registration URL right there. And this allows Harvester to register with Rancher, okay? And let me go ahead and just delete this one just because I like cleaning things up as I go. Okay, so that's the lead, but I've named it Clem House and you can see it's active. What's nice about this, see where it says manage, is I can actually go in and manage it. Let me go back here as well. I can click the name. And now I'm actually looking at Harvester itself through Rancher. So single pane of glass for managing both VMs and uh, as well as containers. So you can see I've got a chasm thing I was playing with and I got volumes. Again, I'm still going through DigitalOcean back around. What's kind of good about this is, again, like I said, single pane of glass, but where we can kind of extend this is we can start thinking about cluster lifecycle management. So the way I kind of take advantage of that is I have to create a cloud credential first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and create a cloud credential. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna use Harvester. I'm gonna call it uh, Clem house to be consistent and I'm gonna see it says I can import for existing cluster and go Clem house and hit create cool it's done now I can actually go and create my cluster so here I'm gonna go ahead and hit create and I'm gonna pick harvester and we're gonna call this let's call it Clem let's call it tubes because why not and I've got one manager node see my machine pools I've got one manager node Okay, it's two core, four gigs of RAM. We're gonna pick the default namespace. We're gonna pick the user Rocky. We're gonna select our Rocky 9.4 image and kind of highlight uh, how it, what it's doing is it's actually pulling that information from Harvester itself. So that's the way, it's really nice that I can be able to say, okay, what images are loaded locally within Harvester? And instead of 40, make it 60 gigawatts. Uh, for the networking, I've got one VLAN one done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a second node pool and I'm gonna do two and these are gonna be worker nodes and we're gonna follow the same kind of thing. So we're not changing anything. The other thing I like changing is instead of Calico, I'm gonna use Canal because I think Canal loads a little faster. It is the default uh, when you install RKE2 from scratch. Yeah, for some reason, Rancher just picks Calico um, instead of Canal. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Okay, that's it. Pretty simple. Um, so what it's doing right now, we can actually click into it. We can look at the provisioning log. We can look at our two, our two sets of pools. The nice thing now is we can go over to Harvester. We can go to virtual machines. And in very short order, we'll actually see it start populating and create those virtual machines. Yep, there we go. Perfect. And there it's created the first three virtual machines. Now, one side note is my harvester is running on a Minus Forums, uh, pretty high end, but still it's a NUC with one NVMe drive. So it does take a minute or two to kind of spin up those VMs and uh, really kind of you know get them running. We can see here that that first one is running. So well, let's go look at the main one. So that's pool one. So if we go ahead and look at that, we can open up a web VNC console and we can see that the machine is actually booting. And there we go. And within, 30 seconds, we'll actually get it to the point where it will, we'll get a login prompt. Now it's interesting because I'm managing it through Rancher. I don't actually have local credentials. Cool, there's our login prompt. I don't have local credentials. So uh, what I'd have to do is get the SSH key from Rancher itself. 
There's other ways that you can use templates to kind of auto inject uh, secondary SSH keys. Uh, I'm also looking at uh, automating this through our cloud templates such that we can use fleet to automatically build the downstream and auto inject things with um, cloud in it. But uh, that's for a future video, right? So you can see we've got our three VMs up and running. We can go back to Rancher itself. One of the nice things about the cluster provisioning is we can look at the provisioning log and that tells us that, okay, great. It's talking to the first node, it's checked in. Now it's waiting for the cluster agent to check in, which should take uh, another minute or two. And what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna pause the video and we'll let this, it usually takes about five minutes, but I'll make sure I'll start the video right back up as soon as the machines are active. And we're back, cool. So it took about five minutes for the machines to go ahead and get configured. And we can see right now that we've got both our uh, two pools running. We've got everything's up and running. We can go look at the provisioning log. We can see everything checked in, which is great. The nice thing about this is that we can actually go and treat it just like any other cluster within Rancher. So we've got our nodes, we can see the IPs. What's kind of interesting about this is that notice I've got an SSH shell. So what it's actually able to do, similar to going into a pod, is I can actually SSH into a node. This might run into an issue only because of the networking. Yeah, I, I uh, don't have inbound, but this may take a minute. We're gonna let that go. Um, again, it has to do with the networking, but what the other nice thing we can do is I can click on it. Notice it says I can download an SSH key. So this will actually download to my machine. I'm gonna go ahead and unzip it and get rid of that window. And let me pull up my terminal. So here I've got my terminal on my desktop and we can see that I've got my node pool. I double click the folder twice, but what I'm gonna be able to do, and that was that first one. So I'm gonna copy the, the IP address. I'm gonna go back to my terminal and I'm gonna SSH Rocky at IP. And uh, what was that? Tubes. First day with the fingers and that's idrsa.pub. Nope, IDRSA. And there we go. So now I'm on my node. I can run H top. Oh, we're on top. And we can see my kubelets running there. I can hit one. I've got this is my two cores. So that's really kind of an interesting way to be able to manage your VMs from a cluster standpoint of view and not really spend too much time, you know, SSHing the nodes and things like that. But you do have the capability, which is really good to see. And again, similar to anything else within Rancher, I can go to the apps. Let's go ahead and deploy monitoring because that's my, whoop, not Prometheus, uh, Federation, I clicked the wrong one, monitoring. We can do install and just do next, 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 next. And so like any other cluster, it's a Rancher, 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 Rancher managed cluster. Um, I can manage it just like I normally would. I can deploy applications to it in the five different ways to do it. Uh, which makes it really uh, useful uh, to be able to both manage on-prem from a cloud provider, but then also take advantage of Harvester as an infra infrastructure provider. Uh, I hope this uh, helps the team I was working with yesterday. And please look uh, for the next video where I add, I do this all kind of programmatically with cloud templates, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching.